What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic just for a quick tutorial. Uh, I know I've been getting a lot of questions recently about how the Hover City works and how to wire it all up, and I'm really excited about that. So I'm going to sort of do a little bit of tutorial here on how the wiring mechanism works and why it is what it is, and uh, also what signals are actually being sent down that through a WSAD converter. So I'm going to show that towards the end in case you guys don't know what a WSAD converter is. Um, but in terms of the Hover City, uh, I've seen a few sections now that people have sent to me that's absolutely awesome. Uh, just so you all know, I'm not going to upload your sections to the workshop. I don't want to take anybody's credit or anything like that. So if you do want to upload a section, that's awesome. You can send me the link to it on the workshop or you can send me the map file. It doesn't matter to me either way. Um, but it's actually a lot easier for me if you upload it to the workshop because then I can have them all on my lift and I can just spawn them in as need be. And I am going to do a viewer creation episode per se, like viewer section episode. Um, I am going to do that at some point in time. But again, upload your stuff to the workshop. Send me the link of that. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you guys how to wire it up because I know a lot of people are confused about uh, how it works. So the objective with the Hover City was really to create parallel communication, which basically means I have a gate here. Well, this is way too far apart. I have a gate here and I have a gate here, right? So we'll put one gate here. We'll put one gate here. I'm going to make these OR gates just to make everything easier. And so the issue in Scrap Mechanic is this. If I put a switch here and a switch here and I wire them up, right? This switch will turn on this gate and this switch will turn on this gate. But if I try and connect this gate to this one, let's say, this switch will turn on both, but I can't feed it backwards. Now, someone brought up, uh, well, why don't you just put an intermediate OR gate? So like this, so we put an intermediate OR gate, which then wires this back. So you would think that works, but the problem is you create an infinite loop. And you can try this with a, a many, many different configurations. And no matter how hard you try, you're always stuck with this stupid infinite loop. And so there's not really much you can do about it. You're kind of just, you know, you're screwed. You can't ever turn it back off. So when you're trying to build this wire, it's actually really simple. So you put down an OR gate here and we put down another OR gate here. And then we put down an AND gate and I'm going to stagger them out a little bit. Um, actually, we're, we're going to stagger that a little bit more. So we're going to put an AND gate here and another AND gate here. And then we need another gate here and another gate here. And basically the circuit is quite, quite simple. And the circuit works as follows. It says, if this is activated, then I have to activate this. Same sense, if this is activated, I want to activate this. Now the other half of the AND gate says, if this AND gate is activated, then I can't activate this one. And in the same sense, if this one is activated, I can't activate this one because you don't want them to cross connect. You want it to flow through the one and not through the other. So you say, okay, the knot of this one goes to this one. So this is just a NOR gate, which means this AND gate is off. So this NOR gate is on. And then this AND gate goes to this NOR gate, which then cross connects to that other AND gate. And that is a wire. So now if I connect this switch to here, this one is on. And because this one is on and this AND gate is off through this NOR gate, then this AND gate is on, which in turn powers this OR gate here. Same sense if I go and put a switch on the other side and we connect this up, turn this on, this OR gate is on, which means this AND gate is on because this one is off. Now what happens if you turn on both switches? Well, it doesn't actually matter because guess what? You're now powering both blocks. So this is the basic, basic wire mechanism. And, uh, you know, it might seem a little confusing, but it's, it's really, let's just do this a little bit easier even. Hope that makes sense. Hope you guys can see that. So it's OR gate here, connects to AND gate, connects to NOR gate, across to the other AND gate, to the NOR gate, back across, and then cross feeding. And that creates the simple wire mechanism. So... I, of course, made this a little bit more modular. So this is six wires. This is what the hover ship uses. I am going to get rid of that because that is going to cause some serious damage to people's retinas. So here you have four gates times six, uh, times six pairs, and this is for the six color codes on the uh, hover city. Now, of course, people are probably wondering, well, uh, why are there only four gates when this has six? Well, the two OR gates you put on either side. This one goes in on the outside and out on the other side. And then this one goes out in on this side and out on the opposite side. And now you've created your basic wire. So that's how the Hover City works. Um, it's really, really quite simple. There's just six of them, but that's why you need six. Now, the reason there's six controls in the Hover City is actually because 
I, I recently released that video with the thruster module and I wanted that thruster module to be able to be put anywhere in the city, absolutely anywhere. And no matter where you put it, it will still do the same thing. And if you have multiple thruster modules, they will all still work together to move the whole city. And the reason why is they use a WSAD converter. So I convert WSAD signals from a steering wheel, which is in the front console, to a series of buttons. Now I know this is probably a relatively intuitive thing. I'm sure a lot of people have done this before and I'm in no means claiming to be the first one, but if you guys don't know how to make a WSAD converter, I just figured I would show you real quick. So let's say this is WSAD as our outputs. So A and D are actually the easiest ones to do and I'm sure many of you have done this before. And it's just make a, a some sort of a swivel mechanism, hook it up to the steering, and hook those sensors up to whatever. And now when you steer left and you steer right, it works as a WSAD converter for A and D. So this is obviously really simple. And then you can take these signals and send them into those wires, which then go out to the rest of the city. And that's basically how the whole hover city works. So you put down a motor and you need a gas motor because gas has that lovely neutral gear. So when you let off the throttle, these two suspension pieces will actually push it back to the default position. So you just make a static wall there like so, and a static wall there like so. So there's your arm, for example, and we'll just color this one white as well. So there's the uh, A and D arm, and then W and S is controlled by this lovely gas engine, which I believe has to be set three ticks short like that. Oh, uh, no, it's on the third tick then, Mike. There you go. So you can see there, when you press on the throttle, it'll push against the suspension, but then it won't, it'll, the suspension still has enough force to push against the neutral and push it back to the default position. So now, if you put a sensor here and here, sensors don't pick up suspension, which is kind of convenient. So now you see you press W, and it'll go back, you press S. There's a little bit of a delay because the motor kind of has to like, gear into it per se let's call it that um but there you have now a wsad converter so obviously this is a very uh expanded version you can compact this a lot inside the hover city control center there is one of these this is the uh, wsad converter mechanism so you can see there we've got the uh the swivel with the sensor there the elect the gas engine powering this little suspension guy uh and two sensors right in front of it and just close that back up but that is the wsad converter and then it converts it into WSAD and then two other buttons and the two other are a white button and a purple switch. Purple switch turns on all the thrusters in the city and the white button is the master reset. So those are the, the other two that are sent down. So you can see here when you turn on the purple, that'll actually turn on the purple there and same sense if you press the white button, it presses the, the white button on there. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I have got a few requests for some more tutorials that I will be doing. Uh, definitely some more logic stuff. So if you guys have any logic questions, any logic tutorials, let me know. Put it down below. I did want to put this sort of in just a Hover City video just so you guys can really understand how the Hover City works. And uh, the rest of the Hover City modules, so the power plant and the thruster module will be imported into the collection. So check the description below for that. And uh, I'm also going to include this in with the Hover City collection, this six wire mechanism. Um, it is very flashy, but I'll include that six wire mechanism. So if you guys do want to make a Hover City, um, you can just use that. And again, really, really simple stuff. It's always just outside goes out to one side and then goes into the other side and out to that side and back into this side. So really, really simple stuff. Um, if you guys want to use it, go ahead. And as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time.